It's not something you can describe with words, but you feel it in your soul, and you know what it is when you see it. It's the mark of the master. When you talk about Albrecht Durer, you can only describe him and his work in superlatives. He died in the year 1528, and on his epitaph, his friend, the humanist philosopher, wrote, whatever was mortal of Albrecht Durer lies beneath this mound. There are three important things about Albrecht Durer that everyone should realize. Number one, he was the father of printmaking. There were prints before him, but he was the one who saw the potential of the medium to change the world. Number two, he was the first artist to break away from the patronage of the church and the monarchy and become an individual artist, create his own identity through his self-portraits and his monogram, which became very famous all over Europe and influenced literally thousands of other artists. And three is virtuosity. When people looked at a work by Albrecht Durer, they knew that no one else could create this. He was the only person capable of creating these astonishing works of art that still to this day amaze us. Rembrandt was the most important artist of the Baroque period, along with Caravaggio. Rembrandt was the father, truly, of the medium of etching. He made paintings to make money and took mostly commissions, but in his etchings we find his true spontaneity, his creativity, his restlessness, and he left a body of over 300 etchings, which to this day are considered some of the greatest masterpieces of the technique. Rembrandt worked in landscape, he worked in genre scenes, religious subjects, portraits, and self-portraits, and he was the father of what's called psychological portraiture, trying to say something about the character of the human being, the spirit of the person, and not just what they look like. Rembrandt today is considered one of the greatest masters of all time, and people line up to see his works in museums all over the world. Francisco de Goya, the great Spanish master, was the court painter for King Carlos, and he made tapestry designs and etchings and engravings after painting, so he learned to tell a story, and he learned the technique of etching. Goya became deaf later in his life, and it transformed him psychologically. One of his senses was removed, and he went down into his own personality and began to contemplate the foibles of human nature from a different angle. He created his magnificent series, Los Caprichos, with 80 different etchings, talking about the caprices of mankind, which became very famous as well. Goy's technical virtuosity, combined with his amazing storytelling ability, and his viewpoint of society of his time, changed the course of art history, and Goy is considered by many to be the first modern artist. Pablo Picasso is considered the most important artist of the 20th century. And he lived a multiplicity of artistic lifetimes, creating all sorts of amazing transformations in his work throughout his career. He worked in virtually every medium you can think of. Painting, watercolor, drawing, ceramics, sculpture, etchings, lithographs, lino cuts. It's truly impossible to wrap your mind around Picasso's genius and he will always be one of the most influential artists of all time. Pierre Auguste Renoir, when you say the name, it conjures up swoons in many people's imaginations. He was one of the greatest of the Impressionists, one of the most powerful and greatest masters of color, and an artist who continues today to be very influential as Impressionism, even into the 21st century, is still a vital and important art form. Renoir became infirmed with rheumatoid arthritis late in his life, and it was impossible for him to hold the brushes in his hands and hold the crayon in his fingers and etchy needle to make his works. So they were literally lashed into his fingers to be able to create these astonishing paintings at the end of his life. When you look at the body of his work, which is voluminous, you see such a consistent quality and focus on beauty and classicism, and Renoir will be forever one of the most sought after artists in the history of art. Marc Chagall, in my opinion, was the epic poet of the 20th century. In the same way that a written poem will use a word to create our own associations and bring our own ideas to it, so Chagall used visual images, a bouquet of flowers, lovers, 
the Eiffel Tower, a fiddler on the roof, these are all elements of his visual vocabulary. And when Chagall made a work of art, he said he would put it up against a God-made object like a flower or a tree, and if it clashed, it wasn't art. He also went on to say that when he created his art, he was competing with the beauty of flowers and failing. Chagall created his own nature, he created his own imagery, and there's no particular style that you can attach to Chagall. He was just Chagall. Juan Miró was one of the greatest of the Surrealist masters. The man who wrote the manifesto of Surrealism was a man named André Breton. And Breton said that of all the Surrealists, Miró was the most surreal. Miró was trying to clear away all the things we think art should be, to get the essences, making a mark on a surface and creating visual energy. And there's something that resides inside his work that is so powerful and so evocative, people still today are trying to interpret it. Miro freed his mind from the restrictions of nature and opened up the complete possibilities of a pure visual language. The subconscious played an important part in his work, randomness and chance, prehistoric art, and the art of children were all sources that Miro used to found his amazing virtuosity. So what do all these artists have in common from these different eras and styles? The command of their tools, the virtuosity of their technique, and their singular visions, which have become timeless and have gone on to inspire generation after generation of artists and will continue to do so. They are the mark of the master. Thank you.